Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dear viewers, sisters and brothers. Welcome to FIP Question Time from Safi TV. It's a great pleasure for us to have with us our great uh, scholar, our great Ustad, Sayyid Muhammad Al-Musawi. We take this opportunity to say salam to our great scholar, Sayyid Muhammad Al-Musawi, and then inshallah we'll ask some questions you have sent to us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sayyidina Al-Aziz. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah bless you and bless all our brothers and sisters and enable all of us to gain more useful knowledge. Knowledge is very great in our life, but we must always focus on the useful knowledge, not any knowledge. There are some fields in knowledge which are not useful for us. Definitely. I don't need to spend my hours, days and nights in reading things which are not very useful to me. For example, people who spend a lot of time in reading novels or reading something which is harmful, like how to do magic games or how to play chess or how to play any gambling game. So we don't say that we seek any knowledge, but we need to seek useful knowledge. <coughs> and useful knowledge is, according to the Hadith, four things. Useful knowledge is number one, to know your creator, that he is the one, the creator, who was never created, la ilaha illahu. Number two, to know what your creator wanted from you. Uh -huh. Number three, to know what bounties your creator bestowed on you. Number four, to know Things which are dangerous on you, things which are harmful, that it can make you out of the way. أن تعرف أو أن تعلم ما يخرجك من دينك. Dangerous things you should know to be careful and aware. So. Seeking knowledge is a great ibadah. Mm -hmm. In fact, the thawab of seeking knowledge, useful knowledge, is more than the thawab of many other worships. The thawab of asking, thawab of answering, thawab of listening. <coughs> Yes, please. Yes, so you mentioned about uh, some types of knowledge. Of course, you mentioned um, different uh, types of knowledge. What about, we have a, a question here as well. Is allowed relation with jinn, a jinn? There is in the Quran, Allah says. Sorry, so there is, in the, the, they ask this question because some people, they, they get knowledge or they get help from a jinn, could be in right path or from uh, jinns. wrong path, yes. From jinn. From jinn, yes. In Quran, Allah says, وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِنَ الْإِنسِ يَعُوذُونَ بِرِجَالٍ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقًا Surah Al-Jinn, yes. Some people from humans used to seek help from some jinns but they landed in more hardships. Hardship. This is the result of it. But the knowledge itself is harmful. And it is not 
advisable and not good and not useful at all to indulge in anything related to jinn. Even in good way? In good way, Allah knows a good way. Jinns are jinns after all. We are humans. Who said, who can decide whether what we want to do is good or bad? You see? We are not being asked to get in touch with jinn that jinn can take us to Mecca, for example. You know, jinn is very fast. Very fast. But we are not being asked to get in touch with the jinn to make us travel to Medina or to Mecca in a second. No. No. We are responsible to worship Allah, to do good, to avoid sinful acts. And our word is a human word. The word of the jinns is a jinn word. It's different completely. Different completely. So we are not allowed to not seek allowed. knowledge from them? No, no, no. Not from jinn. No. At all. Not but, from but, but do we have from jinn group Muslim? Of course. Christian? In Quran, وَأَنَّ, وَأَنَّ مُن, مِنَّ الْمُسْلِمُونَ وَمِنَّ الْقَاسِطُونَ, وَمِنَّ الْقَاسِطُونَ كُنَّا طَرَائِقَ قِدَدًا قِدَدًا So, jinns themselves they say, according to Quran, that among jinn they are Muslims, they are Kafirs, good people, bad people. Shaitan is from jinn. Yes. Illa Iblis kana min al jinni fafasaqa an amri rabbih. Shaitan, Iblis is from jinn. That's why in Quran you read, wa annahu kana safihuna ala Allahi yakulu shatata. The shaitan. talks bad, mm. wrong about the mercy of Allah. They say they says about their yeah. Their so leader. we human beings are not in the field of jinn. We are created as humans and our field is in the human field only. We don't need to go to the world of jinns because that will increase our hardships. Good. But of course with Quran we have the, the help of Quran because many uh, ulamas, many reciters of the Holy Quran, they, they help the people, they are attacked by a jinn, by jinn. Reading Quran is a protection, no doubt. And you read Quran to protect yourself from jinn as well. Jinn can harm some people. Of course, they cannot harm everyone. But jinn can harm some people who did something which made them weak and exposed to the jinn. We have got some acts which are mentioned in the hadiths being makruh acts. And if someone commits that makruh act repeatedly, he might be attacked by the jinn. Good. For example, to sleep in a house alone. Mm -hmm. To sleep on a terrace without wall. Without wall. To urinate on water. On water which is not current water, not current water. Some other things mentioned. Which is so, makruh. Makruh acts can make the human being exposed to the jinn. But if, for example, someone is exposed to the jinn, is there a way to Quran. get him out, yes, Quran. Reciting Quran. Reciting Quran, dua, sadaqa. In Quran, there is a verse in Surah Ar Rahman, Yursalu alaykuma shuwaqun 
من نار ونحاس فلا تنتصران If you recite this verse loudly, the jinn will run away. Okay. Yes, please. You mentioned about chess, Sayyidina Al-Aziz. Is it halal playing chess or haram? Playing chess, shatranj, yes. is haram. We have got at least, at least eight authentic hadiths. Saying that playing chess is haram. Well, what about in Islamic countries? Do you have even competitions of chess? Like in Iran. Everyone should follow his marja of taqlid. Good. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, we go back to some questions from Hajj we have. Here we have a question from one of our dear viewers. Is it recommended to perform Hajj every year? However, there are many poor Muslims ar uh, around the world. They are in the need of food and clothing in different countries. If it comes to making a choice between spending the money for Hajj repeatedly or Ziyarat and between giving in charity for those believers which is more significant and in need, what we have to choose? Number one, we say that it is recommended to go for Hajj and Umrah every year. It's recommended. Recommended. We have got many hadiths. A mu'min came to Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq and told him, I decided to go for Hajj and Umrah every year, either personally or by sending one of my family members from my money. Mm -hmm. Imam asked him, did you decide on that? He said, yes, I did. Imam told him, إذن فأبشر بكثرة المال. Then have the good news that Allah will grant you a lot of wealth. So it is recommended. Number two, going for Hajj is a cause of more income, more barakah. So go for Hajj and utilize the income in feeding more poor people. We don't say don't feed the poor. We say do both. Okay, that's very good. Do both. But don't leave Hajj. For any reason. You know, we have got a hadith. A person came and told Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq I am a rich man. Mm -hmm. And I decided to go for Hajj. It is not wajib Hajj. Not first time, no. He had done his wajib hajj, but he wanted to go for hajj as a recommended hajj. Then something happened which stopped me from hajj. Something important in my life. Now I repent. I repented. I want you, please, to teach me something to do which I can get the reward of Hajj. Imam told him, have you seen the mountain of Abi Qubais? Hmm. <coughs> Very well-known mountain which is in Mecca on the side of Safa. On the side of Safa there is big mountain which is called Jabal Abi Qubais. He said, if you have as big amount of gold mm -hmm. as the mountain of Abi Qubais, Abi Qubais, and you spend it all in the way of Allah, you will not get the reward of Hajj. 
reward of Hajj is very, very great. It is very wrong for some people who try to discourage people from Hajj by such questions even. I mean, why you go for Hajj? A lot of poor people are more entitled. Who said you don't give the poor? Give the poor and go for Hajj. Do two good things. Why not? But don't stop people from going for Hajj. You know, there's a hadith from Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq that a person came to the Imam and told him, one of my friends was intending to go for Hajj. I saw his health very poor. I told him, you are ill. Don't go this year. And he did not go because of my advice. Imam told him, you will be ill. For whole year, you will spend your year on bed. Till that person whom you discouraged from Hajj goes for Hajj then you will be cured from your illness. And that exactly what happened. That man who discouraged a person from Hajj, he was ill for complete year on bed. Till that man who was being discouraged by him went next year for Hajj, this man became okay. So we should not discourage anyone from Hajj. Yes, please. Sayyidna, <clears throat> a question is here. What is the main reason of Hajj? What is the main reason behind Hajj? Hajj, hajj has got infinite, infinite number of benefits, benefits for the human being. The reason of Hajj is to make the human being better human being because Allah says mm-hmm. The reason for Hajj is to make us with taqwa with piousness to make the person dedicated to Allah obedient to Allah, humble in his worship, and humble in dealing with others, and humble when dealing with his family members, his children, his wife, his parents. So Hajj is a great ibadah, one of the greatest, which aims to make the human being real human being. That's why you read in Quran, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ It is for Allah who created us for Him on us adapt حَجُّ الْبَيْتِ حَجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَمَنْ كَفَرْ those who don't go for Hajj after being able means intentionally neglect going for Hajj. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ Allah does not need. We do need. But anyone who is able to go for Hajj and does not go for carelessness, for not giving the proper importance, such person will not die as a Muslim. The hadith says that. Yuqalu, <clears throat> the hadith says, Yuqalu li tarik al idha mat, the person who did not go for hajj, when he dies, Yuqalu li tarik al idha mat, mit in shi'ta yahudiyan aw nasraniyan. Die 
if you wish as a Christian or as a Jew, not as a Muslim. A person who is able to go for Hajj and he did not go for Hajj and when he dies without going for Hajj, he will not die as a Muslim. Good. So there are many benefits, as you mentioned. The benefits yes. are out of counting. Unlimited. Because Allah in the Quran says, لِيَشْهَدُوا مَنَافِعَ لَهُمْ In Arabic, manfa'a one. Manfa'atan, two. two. Manafa' Plural. Jabat Mukassar, yes. Plural in Arabic, two types. Limited, we call al manafa'. When you say al manafa', means the benefits. Mm. When Allah says manafa', benefits, not the benefits, means infinitive. Infinite, mashallah. Out of counting. Of course, one of the benefits, as you mentioned, all different people, different color. They just one have one specific ihram, one color. That is one. Poor, rich, one all from, the people together. From hundreds, from thousands, from more than thousands of benefits. Yes, ahsan to mashallah. Another thing, uh, Sayyidina, um, usually many people, they go when they are old to hajj. Because they think that when they go hajj, they will come clean, pure, uh, as as they, they will be like, a, a, for example, a, a newborn person. Is it right if a person goes to Hajj and he performed the Hajj and when he come back he is pure? He he's like a person who hasn't uh, done, and wrong, done any, no. any and wrong any sin. Is it right? You see, the principle that Hajj is obligatory whenever we are able to go. It is not allowed to postpone Hajj till someone becomes aged. 80, no, 90. no, no, no. Who knows, for example? No, no, no. Hajj is, I mean, it is not allowed even to postpone Hajj to next year. To next year. Mm. If you became mustati' means able to go for Hajj this year then you must go for Hajj this year. You have no permission, no right to postpone it for next year. Now, anyone who goes for Hajj will get great reward. rewards. It depends on the sincerity, on the state of his heart. Some people who are the lower in the Iman. They get blessings in their income and safety for their families. When they come back, they get barakah. More Iman they get all their past wiped out. No sin. Best mu'mineen who go for hajj, understanding hajj, to worship Allah sincerely, the best mu'mineen when they go for hajj, Allah forgives their whole sins of the past, and the future, even the future. Ma taqaddam min dhanbihi wa ma taakhar. So the benefits of Hajj are out of counting. It cannot be counted at all. Good. Uh, Sayyidna, there is another question. It's about what is Hajj of Akbar? Do we have any terminology like this? If, if the that is. That is a terminology which has been misunderstood. Misunderstood, which is, they, 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 they say... Our Sunni brothers say that if the day of Hajj is Friday, they call it Hajj Akbar, which is not right. According to 
the most knowledgeable who are Ahlul Bayt. No one after the Prophet of Islam is more knowledgeable or reliable as well and more pious and more reliable than Ahlul Bayt. <laughs> they say that every Hajj of every year is Hajj Akbar. Akbar. Every year. There is no year that we didn't have Hajj Akbar. Al Hajj, because Al Hajj al Asghar is Umrah. Umrah. Al Hajj, Hajj Akbar. So every year there is Al Hajj al Akbar, whether the Eid is on any day of the week, it is Hajj Akbar. So it doesn't matter if it is on the Friday. No, no. If you have two, two eats together, no? This, because th th this is their philosophy. Because no. they say, uh, Jum'ah is Eid no, and... No, no, no. Jum'ah is Eid, of course. But, Hajj Akbar is every Hajj. Ahsan. Every day of Hajj is Hajj Akbar. Thank you very much, Sayyidina Al-Aziz. Definitely we will continue with these questions in next session, uh, next episode, inshallah. Thank you very much, dear viewers. You can send your questions as WhatsApp, or you can even call in, um, so you have the numbers, so you can give your questions to our dear colleagues, or you can send by WhatsApp. Inshallah, we'll raise your questions with our great Ustad, Allama Sayyid Muhammad Al-Musawi. Thank you very much. We'll see you, inshallah, in next episode. All the best.